As a developer, you often find yourself in a situation where uh, you need to inspect and uh, debug your application to see why your application is uh, slow, why it is uh, freezing, or even uh, why it is crashing. Digging through your logs and uh, figuring out uh, what's happening uh, can be exhausting, especially if you are working with a complex codebase. But what if there is a tool that can scan, analyze, detect, and uh, pinpoint uh, app performance issues for you? so that uh, you can know uh, where exactly to look at. Well, say hi to the Kodzilla platform. Kodzilla is a company which is behind uh, one of the most uh, popular dependency injection libraries, Coin. Recently, I have made a video about their uh, new ID plugin that you can use to quickly access and uh, search different kind of uh, Coin modules, check your configuration tree, and even detect the issues in the real time. But now, they went a step further and created a new web platform where you can connect your project and instantly receive a comprehensive information about your app's performance. Those information include issues that they need your attention, their impact across different versions, and a full breakdown of performance bottlenecks. This new Kodzilla platform detects issues about slow startups, which can detect if your application is taking too long to launch. Then there is a background performance issue, which includes a heavy resource usage on the background thread. Then there is the main background thread issues, when you are using some tasks on the main thread that takes too long to execute, for example, more than 100 milliseconds. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to set up the environment, connect your project with this platform, and automatically detect those issues. For the demonstration purposes, I have cloned the one repository of a now in Android application, which is modified to use a coin dependency injection library. So the first step is to create an account on an official Kodzilla platform. This is necessary because with this, we need to connect our actual project from the Android Studio. The second step is to install a coin dependency injection plugin from your ID. So after you install this new plugin, then on the right side of your panel, you will see one new icon with the coin logo on it. When you open up that same panel, you will see here a message that you need to sign in. And that's the place where you need to enter the credentials of that account that you have created earlier. So after you successfully sign in with your account, then in this coin panel, you will see all your project modules. In this case, I'm using a cloned repository of an application now in Android, and we can see a bunch of different modules here as well. As I mentioned earlier, you can use this Coin ID plugin to quickly navigate to all your project modules. And what's also important, you can detect issues in real time. So, for example, if you forget to include one of those dependencies from your Coin modules, then this plugin will detect those issues in real time. And that specific module will be marked with a warning icon to indicate that there is an error with your coin configuration. So now I'm going to showcase here how we can actually connect our project with the Kodzilla platform, so that we can investigate our application and see all those potential issues with our startup time. So right now I have successfully signed in with the Kodzilla platform, and this is my dashboard. At the moment, I don't have any application registered here which is why we need to click this button to connect our project with this platform. Uh, first, we need to type here the name of our application. In my case, the name of this project is uh, now in uh, Android. Uh, then we need to enter here the package name of our project. Let's just go back to our uh, project right here to check that out. Uh, we can open up here the Gradle build file to see that uh, actual uh, package name. So there we go, com.google.samples.apps.nowinandroid. Let's uh, paste here that uh, package right there. Uh, for the type, we can choose uh, debug for now and uh, click register. There we go. So we have successfully uh, registered this application. Uh, the next thing we need to set up a Kodzilla uh, uh, SDK in our project and also uh, generate uh, one JSON file that uh, will be used uh, as an API key to access this uh, dashboard and uh, send all those uh, logs to this platform. So let's click this uh, next button. Here now we need to add, of course, this uh, JSON file that I have uh, mentioned earlier. So let's click download button. I'm going to quickly uh, copy this file and uh, paste it uh, in this uh, app directory. So right here, I'm going to click here, uh, right click and then paste. So Kodzilla.json, perfect. So this is the JSON file that contains the app ID of our uh, registered application, as well as its uh, package name and the API key. 
So it is important for the initialization of this uh, uh, Godzilla SDK. Okay, let's go back to our dashboard uh, once again to see other different steps. So the next uh, steps will basically tell us that we need to add a uh, Godzilla plugin to our um, root level gradable file as well as a uh, app level gradable file. Okay, and besides that, we also need this uh, Godzilla SDK library. So if you're using a Ktor3 uh, library in your project, uh, then you need to use this uh, different kind of uh, uh, dependency, right? In my project, uh, I have already configured all of that, so let me show you here. As you can see in our uh, project level gradable file, I have this um, uh, class path for the Godzilla plugins, so there you go. Uh, next, we have our uh, app gradable file. Here, I have also added this uh, plugin and the SDK itself uh, right there as well. So it's uh, inside uh, our dependencies block. There we go. And if you're using, of course, a Kotlin multi-platform project, then you can just add this uh, SDK in your uh, common main source set. So it will work uh, out of the box. Okay, let's go back to our dashboard to see um, what else we need to add here. Click uh, Next button. Uh, the next uh, thing we need to add, uh, or actually start, the Godzilla SDK. We can do that within the onCreate function of our application class. So this is our Android application class, of course. Let's navigate back to our project for a moment. Okay, so I have already added this analytics. And it is important to specify this onConfig parameter. So in this parameter, just call this API key function. So this uh, API key function will grab that uh, JSON file that we have pasted in our project and it will read the API key from that file. So basically that's everything we need to add here. Uh, the analytics block is uh, needed in this, um, in this uh, initialization uh, block of our coin uh, library. So let's go back to our dashboard, click uh, next. There we go. So we have completed uh, all those uh, steps. I think that now we are ready to um, to see that uh, first uh, session of ours. So, so now let's uh, try uh, launching this application in uh, Android emulator uh, to start our first uh, session with the Godzilla uh, platform. So let's click this uh, play button. Uh, okay, so I have received here an exception that says that uh, it cannot read our Kotlin JSON project file. Let me just uh, see what this is all about. Okay, so it appears that we need to modify our actual package name. So uh, after this, uh, now in Android, we need to add um, a demo.debug. So let's just open up this uh, Godzilla JSON file first. So now in Android.demo.debug. Uh, okay, so now I think that we uh, should be able to start our application. Let's check that out. Okay, so now our application has uh, started successfully. Let's uh, for a moment uh, open up that dashboard. Uh, let's open up our home. Okay, so now this is our actual project. And we can already see that we have registered uh, one session. So let's open up this uh, our project. And we are going to see here a bunch of different uh, information. So in this uh, dashboard tab, we can see a total session that we have captured. At the moment, I have run this application only once, which means that we have uh, captured only one session. There are 237 events. Uh, one device, uh, five issues, and five open issues. So the current version uh, of our application is 0.1.3. If you check the Gradle build file of uh, our project, let me just here open that up, we should be able to see that the uh, same version. There you go, so 0.1.3. So the next time we update this uh, actual version name uh, value, for example, to 1.0.4, and we launch our application, then a new session will be created with a different version. And we can track uh, various different versions and see whether we have improved our uh, application from the previous version or not. That's also one useful uh, thing here to do. Uh, so for the open issues down below, we have a, a child dependency performance type. So there are different categories of issues that we can encounter uh, on this uh, platform, right? For example, we have a dependency, comp uh, dependency complexity, child dependency performance, and uh, other ones as well. So at the moment, as you can see, uh, we can also read information about uh, which class uh, has dependency performance issues. In this case, that's a listenable worker. Uh, so we can see here that there is a worker in our, uh, uh, in our project. So let's just open that up. Let's see our project. So I'm going to here search for a worker class. Even though I'm not uh, familiar with this actual uh, uh, project itself. So let's just open up here um, worker. 
So yeah, as you can see, this um, sync worker uh, contains uh, quite a few dependencies that we are actually injecting inside it. So that's why we see that uh, performance uh, issues with dependencies, because we have a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, even nine dependencies injected in this uh, single worker. That's why we are seeing these uh, performance issues. Anyhow, I'm going to now try to demonstrate, um, uh, for example, the issues with the main thread. So let's here uh, try and, um, in this initialization block of the main view model, add one uh, sleep uh, function to sleep this uh, thread for uh, six seconds, right? So I'm going to now also uh, change this value to uh, 0 0.1.4. Uh, let's also uh, sync the project and we can uh, launch this application once again so that we can see whether now this uh, platform uh, should detect that a uh, new change uh, or that uh, new uh, issues of ours. So let's here run our application. This is the new version. So now as you can see our start screen is uh, quite slow so we are waiting for uh, six seconds before we initialize that uh, main view model. And only after six seconds, uh, so our application has actually crashed now. For now, open up that uh, dashboard to see what we have here. Let's go to home. So now we have uh, three sessions uh, registered actually, or uh, two sessions, yeah, total sessions captured number two. We can uh, now here choose that uh, second version, so uh, 0.1.4. So now here we can uh, see uh, the actual uh, issue type. In this case, that's a crash issue which is associated with our main activity view model, which is the exact uh, view model in which we have added that uh, uh, delay, uh, thread delay of uh, six seconds. So from those uh, log information, we can uh, easily see what's going on. We can even click on that uh, log to see some more information about the, the actual crash. We have an option to update this uh, issue to say acknowledged or uh, closed. We can see the version in which this uh, issue has appeared and we can read uh, some more uh, things about uh, the uh, phone or a device uh, on which we have ran this, uh, this session. So there we go, we have also a session as a tab here. There are three different uh, sessions in this case. Okay, so there we go. Let's go back to our project. We can now remove uh, this uh, initialization uh, block. Or in this case, uh, we can now remove only this uh, illegal argument exception. Uh, okay, so now let's go back. Let's increase here the version to uh, 0.1.5 in this case. Great. Uh, run the application again. Now this time uh, our application will not crash, but still our uh, view model initialization uh, will be delayed for uh, six seconds. So it will also um, log um, some performance issues on the main thread uh, for sure. So let's uh, go back to our dashboard. We can choose here a new version. So let's go back to home. Uh, so we have a new session. So there we go. After we select this uh, new version, then uh, we should be able to see here a new issue type, in this case, a main thread performance, which means that uh, we are delaying our uh, main thread in our uh, main activity view model, which is why we're getting this um, uh, this uh, issue uh, right here. We can uh, click on that to see some more information. Here it says that uh, our uh, main activity view model resolution is uh, running on the main thread for more than uh, 100 milliseconds and the application not responding uh, occurs when the main thread is uh, blocked for too long. So here we also have uh, an explanation about uh, a specific uh, issue type that we open up from here. Uh, we can also open up the, the actual emulator on which we have ran our uh, session. And there we can find a bunch of different uh, useful informations. Uh, a graph, for example, we have a device uh, information, the OS. And we have the timeline. Uh, from the timeline, we can choose and actually select one of those uh, information for the threads. So we have a coin module load, coin resolution. We can check here the graph to see how many instances uh, were created. So how many new instances, how many uh, volatile instances, and uh, so on. It's quite useful. So we have a new volatile and requested instances. So we have over 30 instances uh, in this um, uh, application right now. Down below, we can check out different kind of um, uh, information about uh, various uh, tasks. So, so for each and every task, we can see uh, how long does it take to actually uh, execute. In this case, we can see our main activity view model, which was executed for uh, 6,000 milliseconds or um, uh, six seconds, so that's uh, basically uh, the correct information that we are seeing right here. 
we can see that uh, the create uh, uh, the creating of our uh, user data repository was uh, uh, delayed, or actually this is a child dependency performance. So yeah, we have the user data repository which, ha which has the performance issues uh, with its dependencies. And our main activity view model uh, depends on that um, on that actual repository. There we go. So we can see that right here, that uh, listenable worker that I have talked about earlier. So uh, 18 new instances were created uh, uh, from this actual worker, so it uh, lasted for uh, 115 uh, milliseconds. So that was a uh, task which was running on the background thread in this case. So this is uh, a background thread, while the main is the main thread. So each uh, issue type here is uh, marked with different color, okay? So here, for example, we have a, a main thread performance along with the dependency performance issues. It's uh, colored with this uh, orange color. Uh, then we have this um, a green color which basically states that uh, something has uh, started, created or uh, resumed in this case. A comprehensive information about uh, performance of our application. So, so from all those information we can uh, clearly see uh, what is causing our application to either crash uh, or to be slower, uh, what kind of uh, instances uh, are actually troublesome in this uh, project and stuff. So it's quite uh, useful and uh, helpful platform. So there we go. Uh, that's how you can uh, easily integrate this uh, platform in your project. So basically this uh, whole platform uh, receives uh, all different kind of uh, logs from your uh, application. And then this uh, platform is uh, sorting and arranging our uh, logs so that uh, it's more uh, human readable. They are uh, categorizing all those uh, logs and uh, even explaining uh, potential issues uh, in our project. So bottom line, one, uh, one useful platform uh, indeed. So let me know in the comment section down below uh, what you think about this uh, whole platform, uh, whether are you planning to use this uh, SDK uh, in your future projects. Other than that, be sure to leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.